Hi everyone, I'm Beth and I want to welcome you to the National Portrait Gallery's new story time called Introducing, where we tell stories through portraits. Just like reading a book, reading a portrait can tell us a lot about the people who have helped shape this country. So each week we'll look at a new portrait and discover how that person made history. Uh, this month, because we're celebrating the 4th of July, we're going to talk about people who wrote about freedom. And today, I would like to take you back in time, about 250 years back in time, as we are introduced to Phyllis Wheatley. Now, 250 years ago, there was no internet, there were no videos, the United States was not even a country, it was a bunch of colonies. And here people lived and worked, and many of those people were enslaved. If you've been with us in the past, we've talked about this word enslaved. Um, when someone is enslaved, they are forced to do really, really hard labor all day. They're often taken away from their families. Their freedoms and their choices are taken away. It's a really hard way of life. And Phyllis Wheatley was one of those enslaved people. When she was a young girl, she was kidnapped from her home in West Africa, which must have been terrifying. She was brought here and sold to a family in Boston called the Wheatleys. And when she was still a young girl, the Wheatleys realized that Phyllis was special. So let's look at her portrait and talk about what made her so special. This portrait is an engraving, meaning that the artist carved her image onto a flat, hard surface like a piece of metal and then ink was spread across the surface and then the image was pressed onto a piece of paper. If you've ever used a rubber stamp you're familiar with the process. So this portrait of Phyllis Wheatley shows her in profile meaning that we just see one side of her face. She's seated at a table. She has really good posture. She has a little bit of a smile one elbow rests on a table and she holds her face in her hands. What does this pose mean to you? Can you try posing like Phyllis Wheatley? What do you think this means? I think it means she's thinking. What might she be thinking about? Well, let's look at the rest of the portrait and see if we can discover some more clues. In her other hand, She's holding a feather quill. Before pens were invented, this was what people used to write. They would dip the sharp end of a feather into a bottle of ink called an inkwell, and then they used that to write. So Phyllis is writing. Maybe she's thinking about what she's writing. We also see here a book. Phyllis Wheatley loved to read. She read in multiple languages, she read the Bible and classical literature, meaning books that were written hundreds of years before she was born. She loved to study astronomy, meaning um, things in space like stars and planets. She loved to study geography, so things, the land here on Earth. And um, as much as everything that she studied, she put that into her writing to make her writing as um, interesting and informed as she could. So I think she's thinking about what she's writing. She wrote a lot about freedom, particularly freedom for enslaved people. Um, in one of her poems, she wrote, let virtue reign, then accord our prayers, be victory ours and generous freedom theirs. She wrote for um, freedom for enslaved people, generous freedom, as she called it, meaning that they would have everything that they wanted and needed. When I see this portrait of Phyllis Wheatley, I see someone who is thinking hard about every word she writes and how to persuade her readers, many of whom were white, to believe her words. Her first book of poetry was published in 1773, and it was called Poems on Various Subjects, religious and moral. With the publication of this book, 
which used the portrait that we just saw, uh, she became the first African-American woman to publish a book of slavery in the United States. Uh, this book was controversial when it was published and controversial means that it made a lot of people angry. A lot of people were angry because there was this, this lie, this belief that was really common that African-American people, especially enslaved people, were not as intellectual, um, were not artistically gifted. But with Phyllis's writings, along with this image of her as she's writing, we have a powerful demonstration of African-American brilliance. Phyllis Wheatley wrote about 450 poems. She had a lot of famous fans and admirers, including George Washington and Benjamin Franklin. Unfortunately, even after her first book was published, she was still enslaved until 1774 when she finally gained her freedom. But she continued writing through the rest of her life. Um, she wrote about freedom and her words are still read and are still powerful today. One of my most, one of the, the quotes from Phyllis Wheatley that I like the most about freedom was written in a letter that was published by a lot of newspapers in Boston. And she said, for in every human breast, God has implanted a principle, which we call love of freedom. It is impatient of oppression and pants for deliverance. And I will assert that the same principle lives in us, meaning that every human loves freedom and longs for freedom. So next time you sit down to write, remember your Phyllis Wheatley thinking pose, and maybe you can come up with a few lines about what freedom means to you. Thank you so much for joining us this week for introducing Phyllis Wheatley. Please join us next week as we explore a new famous story through portraiture.